So now in this video, we're gonna look at the 555 timer in a stable mode. So here is the circuit that I have on the board with one exception. Instead of just having the LED go into the negative rail from the output, that is the red LED, I also have a green LED going to the positive rail from the output. So the short lead, the cathode is to the output, long lead, the anode towards the uh, positive side of the supply, and it has a protective resistor. 2200 ohm resistor that's a 1000 because the green LED is just naturally brighter so one thing another thing I want to uh, note so we can get rid of the green LED or we could get rid of the red LED uh, whichever one we want you can either power stuff when the outputs high or low so you can see here I got 5 volts to 12 volts and so when it comes to the timing part of the circuit I have this ready to change voltage I have current limited to uh, 30 milliamps but there you can see we're kind of bouncing around between probably about five and eight milliamps depending on uh, what's going on so the green LED needs less uh, current to be bright has a higher value resistor so that's probably when the current is lower but uh, any case as I said before in other videos you can tell a lot what's going on just by looking at the current that the power supply has to provide so when I press this up arrow we'll have 15 volts. We'll have three times the voltage. So you'll notice the LEDs get brighter and it's probably kind of pushing the current or the power limits of uh, some of these components maybe. But uh, we're just going to do it briefly. And uh, we're going to hit uh, 15. You can see the LEDs got brighter but the flashing time didn't uh, change much if at all. So there we go to uh, 12 volts. We are pumping a lot more current though into the circuit. So we'll go to 12, 12 is a uh, safer voltage right there. So the LEDs are brighter, but they're still uh, flashing pretty much the same time. That's because it's just looking at two thirds or one third of the power supply voltage that the capacitor is charged to, those two pins right there. We'll get to that in a little bit. So that's one of the things I wanted to mention is that uh, you may need a higher voltage for the load, but it doesn't impact the uh, timing much if at all so to begin with I cleared off the components we'll do a build this capacitor is helping to stabilize the uh, rail there this power supply uh, sometimes gives an uh, erratic voltage that throws off the 555 timer but in any case we have to power the 555 timer and so pin number eight goes to the positive rail pin number one the top pin up there goes to the negative rail pin number two and pin number six they are looking at a voltage to determine the output so less than one third of this supply pin number two the trigger pin jumps into action if you get more than two thirds of the power supply voltage then uh, pin number six jumps into action we'll look at that later so to make sure they are looking at the same voltage I just have this little jumper I made that uh, connects the two of them directly the reset pin that has to uh, not do anything at all. It's waiting for a low signal. We put it directly to the positive rail since we don't want it to ever do anything. And uh, that makes sure that it never gets anywhere near the uh, negative rail voltage where it resets the uh, 555 timer. So this jumper right here, that's just coming out of the output. Because I have this large board, if I had a smaller board or just a single board, I would uh, run the output down here or something and uh, have it go to uh, that rail. But since I can just go straight across, it reduces clutter, makes it easier to see things. Also, you'll commonly see a small capacitor, 10 uh, nanofarad probably, which is the same as 0 0.01 microfarad, pin number five to the uh, negative rail. Again, that stabilizes the voltages inside, but I find I generally don't need them, and it makes it harder to make videos. So I usually omit it. So now, we're gonna get to the timing part of this circuit and so you can see pin number one negative rail pin number eight to the positive rail pin number four to the positive rail as I just mentioned pin number three is the output it has a jumper but as I said that's just to uh, extend the range of that pin over to uh, that row right there now we have pin two and pin six to monitor a voltage the voltage is going to monitor monitor I'm going to use a 1000 microfarad capacitor probably close to about the maximum value uh, capacitor 
you want to use with the 555 timer except for it discharges through a resistor so you could actually go larger in this case but sometimes when you build circuits the uh, capacitor discharges directly through uh, pin 7 there so you may want to uh, keep it about 1000 or less but in any case we're gonna need to charge this so to charge this we're gonna come from the uh, positive supply through a 1 kilo ohm resistor in this case you can use whatever value you want again make sure it's not so low you have too much current but uh, in any case the lower value the faster the capacitor will charge for a given capacitance so we're gonna put one kilo ohm right there to pin number seven so pin number seven is where sometimes it's discharging sometimes it's not doing anything so when the capacitor is charging it's not doing anything now we can charge it through two resistors if we want and uh, you'll see that a lot just in schematics or whatnot and so it will take twice as long to charge as to discharge right there but uh, to get it closer to what's called 50% duty cycle where it charges pretty much uh, equally time wise as it does uh, discharges so that's pin 6 and 7 that resistors there we're gonna put this diode in uh, parallel with the resistor so you can probably see that gray stripe right there and that camera doesn't always pick it up terribly well and the uh, just the big black body is over there that goes to pin 7 the gray stripe is gonna go to pin 6 down here which also connects to pin 2 because we have a little jumper and you can see the gray stripe really easy right there so we don't have the capacitor yet and uh, that's uh, really all we need for the timing so this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor 35 volts I I jumped the voltage up to 15 volts before that's really probably maybe the maximum for the NE555 it might go to 18 so I just I didn't mention that earlier but that voltage was getting to the max voltage of the NE555 timer and there may be other 555 timers you can't go that high so make sure you check the part number and that it can go to that voltage so we're going to go to pin 6 right here with the positive side of the capacitor because that's where it charges and then the negative side we're just going to go to the negative rail so that's going to make it harder to see things right there and that is really it for this circuit so the outputs going to do uh, whatever power whatever we put to it so as far as the a stable mode though the power is off we turn it on I left the green LED on there because it's pretty easy to see so you can see that it comes to a resistor here that goes to the positive rail and so the long lead the anode goes to the resistor short lead the cathode goes there so now when the outputs low we'll have positive going through the resistor 2200 ohm right there we'll go through the uh, actually I grabbed a uh, yeah it's just uh, these cheap resistors the uh, 2200 ohm ones they didn't paint them very brightly they're red but they're almost dark enough to look brown and uh, so the green LED just gets brighter with less current so I got a higher value resistor and since uh, we are gonna deal with at times 12 volts so I got the red LED here long lead the anode there we're gonna put it the opposite way because it's going the opposite direction actually let's just put it back here it's a little easier to see long lead the anode's connecting to the short lead to that one and we have a resistor that's gonna go to the negative rail and so it'll be black and when I wire it but uh, there you can see now we got negative there so when we have a high output it'll go through the LED through the resistor there when we have a low output we'll have a positive over here going through that resistor that LED to indicate a low output so it's really easy with LEDs to see if the output is high or low now if we uh, yank this diode we won't have an even timing so so let's pull that and uh, the uh, red LED the output is high for a bit longer so the output is high while the capacitor is charging and then when the output goes low that means the capacitor got to two-thirds of the power supply voltage then the discharge pin starts discharging through one resistor to the uh, negative rail so it discharges twice as fast as it charges when you have two resistors so you can influence the timing just with that diode if you want the output to be high for a 
twice as long as low for the most part. And here I drew some of the workings of it to hopefully make it a little uh, clearer to understand. So the trigger pin right there, pin number two gets a sense that there's less than one third of the power supply voltage. That's what it's waiting for. It sets the output high and it stops discharging the uh, capacitor through the resistor in this case. So it opens that up. This does nothing. So current can come through a resistor. If you have a diode, it goes through the diode and uh, probably a little bit of current goes through the resistor. I think that's one reason why it equalizes the timing uh, so well because uh, diodes have a voltage drop and so you would think they would limit current a little more but I think some current well some current would go through the resistor so I think it equalizes the uh, the losses and uh, again but in any case the capacitor charges and then once this gets to two-thirds of the power supply voltage that's all the threshold pin is waiting for two-thirds of the power supply voltage so the capacitors charge it up towards two-thirds of the power supply voltage and then the uh, trigger pin doesn't really notice the two-third power supply voltage it's just aware that it's above one-third but uh, pin number six the threshold pin notices we got two-thirds of the power supply voltage so this is more positive right now than over here because that's going directly to the negative rail any current from the positive supply goes directly to the negative rail so it cannot put current through the diode again it has to go through that resistor so that resistor sets the discharge uh, time based on the capacitance of the capacitor and the resistor value so RC time constant but in any case there's there's formulas out there too but I don't think it makes it easier to understand the uh, circuitry with the formulas. I think it's just one more thing to learn at the moment. So, in any case, uh, that discharges. But while it is discharging it, also the, so that pin seven goes to ground, but also so does pin three at the same time. And uh, so, if you uh, just discharge, well, you discharge through one resistor, but uh, you charge with one resistor and then discharge through one resistor, you'll get the same timing. So it'll discharge to ground, the output will be low, and so those two times will be equal. But if you get rid of the LED, or the diode I mean, the rectifier diode, then you have to charge through two uh, resistors right there. And so the output as we saw earlier was when we got rid of the diode, the output was high, twice as long as it was low because it charged through two resistors and discharged through one resistor. So, in any case, there's a lot more we could do to make uh, this circuit more interesting. I might do that in the next video. And all kinds of little modifications you can do to uh, make some cool stuff happen. And uh, it's just basically changing the times of the resistors, uh, get rid of the uh, diode or whatnot. You can use a light dependent resistor or a uh, trim pot to uh, change the timing whenever you want with the trim pot or based on light level with the light dependent resistor you could use it uh, goes up to millions of ohms and down to practically none so you can use a fairly low value resistor there and the light dependent resistor there and depending on what capacitor you use will uh, set the time based on the light flow and whatnot all kinds of cool stuff you can do plus you can do different loads and stuff so uh, you can find all kinds of 555 timer uh, schematics if you want to do a whole bunch of projects on them. I don't do a whole uh, ton of them so you just gotta google 555 timer circuit and look through them. Look at the ones that look easiest to build first build those and uh, when you get more experience building them uh, look at the harder ones and try to build those and uh, you'll probably have a lot of fun so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video